You cast Winding Way. Four cards. How many creatures will you hit? Is it just luck, or is there a formula? Today, we're breaking down the mathematics of creature selection in Magic the Gathering. Winding Way versus Lead the Stampede, and when that extra mana is worth it. Let's do the math. Our subjects today will be Winding Way and Lead the Stampede, two of the most common draw spells in green creatures heavy decks. Winding Way reveal 4 cards and put all the creatures among them in your hand. Lead the Stampede reveal 5 cards instead, one extra card for one extra mana. For our analysis, we'll divide the deck into categories. Creatures, what we are looking for, and non-creatures, everything else. We'll also need to track the game state at any given snapshot by CNN with the note total creatures and non-creatures in the decklist, by CVs and NVs with the note the visible creatures and non-creatures, by D the cards remaining in the library, H will be the number of cards in hand, and C the creatures in hand. By visible I mean in public zones that both players can see. Don't worry about memorizing these, there will be a legend on screen to keep things clear. Starting with Winding Way, we'll denote by capital X the number of creatures revealed when the spell resolves. Since we are sampling 4 cards without a replacement from a finite deck, X follows a hypergeometric distribution, the same math that governs drawing your opening hand. We can analyze this from two different information perspectives, complete and incomplete information. In the complete information case, when you cast Winding Way, you know exactly how many creatures are in your hand. The key insight is that the expected number of creatures you'll reveal is four times the proportion of creatures remaining in your library. The other formula you see here is the probability distribution of X. In simple terms, it tells you the probability of revealing exactly K cards for any K from 0 to 4. Now let's consider the incomplete information case. What if you are the opponent trying to predict the outcome? You can see the battlefield and the graveyard, but not their hand. Here's the remarkable part. After working through the probability theory, we find that the expected number of creatures depend only on visible information. It's four times the proportion of creatures among all unseen cards, regardless of hand size. Your opponent can predict winding way impact just by counting what's publicly visible. The probability distribution here is a bit more challenging, because we need to do some mathematical acrobatics to compensate for not knowing how many creatures are in hand. Let's look at a numerical example to see how this works in practice. Suppose our deck contains 38 creatures and 22 non-creatures, and we find ourselves in a mid-game snapshot with the following parameters. From the player's perspective, knowing that there are two creatures in hand, the expected number of creatures revealed is 2.58. From the opponent's point of view, without access to that hidden information, the expectation is 2.54. Nearly identical predictions. Moreover, the probability distribution shows that the most likely outcomes are 2 or 3 creatures, each around 33 or 39%. The whiff rate, 0 creatures, is only about 1 or 2%. Lead the Stampede reveals 5 cards instead of 4. The mathematics is identical, we just change the sample size from 4 to 5. Here's the critical relationship between the two spells. The expected value of Lead the Stampede is exactly 1.25 times that of Winding Way where this constant is the value of 5 divided by 4. Using the same scenario, we can now evaluate Lead the Stampede. From the player's perspective, the expected number of creatures revealed is 3.23. From the opponent's perspective, the estimate is 3.17. Again, two very close values. The distribution picks around 3 and 4 creatures. The probability of revealing at least 3 creatures jumps to about 75%, much higher than Winding's Way's 53%. The whiff rate drops very close to zero. How do these cards actually compare? When we run the numbers across different creatures' densities, the gap between the two spells really starts to show. Hitting two creatures becomes 7 to 10 percentage points more likely. Hitting three jumps to a solid 21 point advantage. And hitting four? That's where Lead the Stampede really shines, giving you a 20 to 27 point bump in your odds. If your game plan needs multiple creatures, Rebuilding after a board wipe or chaining synergies, Lead the Stampede fulfills that need by a margin of 20-25%. There is also the variance factor. Winding Way has higher variance, more swing between outcomes. Lead the Stampede is more consistent, with outcomes clustering around 34 creatures. It has a higher floor and a higher ceiling. 
Without a specific game state snapshot, it is hard to compute these probabilities on the fly and to present the result effectively. That's why I've created an online calculator. You can input your deck composition, visible cards and hand size, and it instantly gives you the expected value and full probability distribution for both spells. The link is in the description. Use it freely during your deck building or between rounds. Let's distill this into actionable insights. Library creature density is the most important parameter. All the distributions scale directly with the proportion of creatures in your deck. High creature density makes both effects dramatically more powerful. Opponent can predict your draws. The expected value depends only on visible information. A careful opponent can estimate whether your spell will be backbreaking just by counting cards in public zones. If you need multiple creatures, lead the stampede wins by a large margin. The probability advantage for 3 plus creatures is 20-25 percentage points, significant when you are rebuilding or chaining synergies. Lead the Stampede's expected value is 1.25 times Winding's Ways. This mathematical relationship always holds. For one extra mana, you get 25% more creatures on average. Winding Way whiffs occasionally. Lead the Stampede almost never does. Winding Way has a 1-2% whiff rate. Lead the Stampede is under 0.5%. On the flip side, Winding Way has higher variance, while Lead the Stampede offers more reliable, consistent performance. Winding Way and Lead the Stampede might look similar, but their probability profiles are meaningfully different. One extra card translates into higher expected value, lower whiff rates, and dramatically better odds of hitting key thresholds. Understanding these distributions gives you the tools to make optimal decisions in deck building and gameplay. So next time you are choosing between these cards, you are not just casting a spell, you are calculating an edge. Thanks for watching. Check out the calculator in the description and let me know what other magic probability puzzles you'd like to see analyzed. Until next time, may your creatures always be in the top 4.